Weekend. It's this weekend in movies. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what was that, Corey? Yeah, baby. <laughs> Corey's on board with the uh, with the this weekend the movies. Yes. So uh, we have two films we want to talk about. The first one is a uh, Thor, which I just got out of about an hour ago, and uh, there is a one sheet. Oh, look at that, Corey putting the one sheet oh, uh, wow. over the uh, comic. Nice. Oh yeah. Look at that. It's unbelievable. Yeah, um, Thor is uh, obviously I don't have to tell you is a, a Marvel comic book character. He's one of the B characters in the Marvel universe, and you know. People were talking about how once you get past Spider-Man in the Marvel Universe, and once you get past, let's say, Superman and Batman in the DC Universe, you know, from a character standpoint and a, and a movie adaptation standpoint, what's left? Well, I think Iron Man proved that you can have a B character in a comic universe and make a good movie out of it. And the same thing goes with Thor. Uh, Thor is... The story exists sort of on three levels. You've got the palace intrigue of... Asgard, and Asgard is this big kingdom where all these gods live. And Odin, played by Anthony Hopkins, is the king, and he has two sons. One son is Thor, played by Chris uh, Hemsworth, who's very good. And the other is uh, Loki, played by this guy named uh, Tim Hiddleston, who I'd never heard of, who's terrific. And the idea is that Thor is the arrogant brother, and Loki is more of the sort of the, uh, uh, the low-key, peace-loving brother. And there's a lot of um, movements within that triangle that I think they do a very good job of sort of navigating as, uh, as uh, allegiances and alliances sort of start to cross. So that's one, uh, that's one phase of the script. The other one is the special effects-driven war between Asgard and these frost giants who live on like another planet or another dimension or something that fanboys could tell me, but I don't really know. Uh, and I just saw the movie. And it's all special effects driven, and the Frost Giants are pretty cool looking creatures. And uh, so there's a war between Asgard and the Frost Giants. And then the other, and probably the least effective part of the story, is the love story, as Thor is banished to Earth and has to interact with Natalie Portman, who plays a physicist uh, on Earth, and hopefully Thor wants to get back to Asgard. Now let's take a look at a clip, and then we'll let you know what we thought of the movie. Thor, oh, Odin's son. You have betrayed the express command of your king. Through your arrogance and stupidity, you have opened these peaceful realms and innocent lives to the horror and desolation of war! You are unworthy of these realms, unworthy of your title! You are unworthy! I now take from you your power in the name of my father and his father before. I own it, your father! Cast you out! Uh, Thor is surprisingly good, and it is uh, good for a couple of reasons. One is, well, every, first of all, it's top down. You know, when you talk about uh, movies, really any movie, a comic book movie, a drama, a comedy, doesn't matter, it's, the success of the movie really is based less on the actors, which tends to be what pop culture focuses on, who's starring in it, and really it's the director. The director is the one who, the director is the person who pushes the ship, makes sure that the actors and the cinematographer and the editor and the composer are all going in the same direction. It's their sensibility that informs the film. And here you've got a great match. And if you look at comic book films, you'll see how, you'll see why certain ones work and certain ones don't work. You look at Batman and Chris Nolan. That's a match that works. That's why those films work. You look at The Green Hornet and Michelle Gondry. Mismatch. Doesn't work. I don't know why Michelle Gondry was directing that film. And the film was terrible as a result. Here you've got Thor and Kenneth Branagh. Now Kenneth Branagh is pretty much this generation's preeminent interpreter, filmic interpreter of Shakespeare. And Thor has a lot of that big Shakespearean emotions with these gods on high on their big mountain making these big proclamations. And Branagh does that very well, but what he also does well is he knows how to modulate it correctly. It's not too big. There's no ham and there's no cheese. This is modulated just right so that you take it seriously, but it's not over the top. So Brandon does a terrific job. The other thing that the movie does well is it takes the comic and the origin story seriously. 
It doesn't play it as if it's these crazy guys in, uh, in funny hats and tights running around pretending like they're gods. Uh, what the brothers go through in interacting with their father feels, it's not ordinary people, but it feels serious enough that you know that everybody is invested in it and they're taking the script, which is pretty good for the type of film that it is, seriously. There's a little bit of humor in it. A lot of that humor comes from Natalie Portman, who I think uh, lends some really kind of interesting line readings to some of her lines, which kind of gets some laughs that you feel the laughs really come from the way she delivered the line, which I think is terrific. And uh, I thought the film was surprisingly satisfying. And what I really liked about it is that this is the film where you think to yourself, oh my God, and Philip, you can talk to this, where you think, oh my God, my, my dream of seeing an Avengers movie, right? Remember when, when we were kids and you'd read the comic books, and Spider-Man would appear in a, in a, in a Thor comic, in an issue of Thor. And the Wasp would appear in an issue of Daredevil. And you had all these comics poll cross-pollinating. And you had the Avengers where you had like four or five of them all together. And you just love that. I just feel like I'm getting excited about the Avengers now because Thor turned out to be good. Well, more these comic book movies, for me as a comic book fan, and I haven't seen Thor yet, but I feel like this is, like to me, the golden age of comic book movies because when I was a kid, we would watch comic book movies and they were horrible because we didn't have visual effects. You know, you couldn't make humans do things that the, the superheroes would do in the comics. And now with, with 3D animation and the, and the technology we have, it is, it's legit. And, uh, and, 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 and in the last few superhero movies, there's been those little cameo things that excite people where at the end of Iron Man, you see the Thor's hammer found and Nick Fury making an appearance every now and then. And there is one of those. I won't tell you what it is, but there's a, you got to stay through the end credits. But I am so excited to, that we have these comic book movies that actually are good. But, yeah, but here's the thing, too. The, there's a reason why these comic book movies are good, and they're good because... Since the days when uh, those other movies came out, Hollywood has changed. And the studios cater exclusively to boys, which is not how it was in the 60s and the 70s and kind of part of the 80s. It's certainly that way now. So when you're dealing with an industry that, that caters exclusively to boys, all they do is chase boys, <laughs> 18 to well, 13 to let's say 34. That means going back to comic books. And if you're going to chase those kids, you can't make a comic book movie for $5 million and have Red Brown play Captain America. Okay? <laughs> you got to hire Christopher Nolan and you got to throw $150 million at it and get Christian Bale to play Batman because that's the best way to chase after boys is you make it into an event. Now, the comic book films that do best tend to be the ones that have some way to attract a female audience or an older audience. And I don't know that Thor necessarily does that. Uh, but it's okay because the film is good. Now, regarding the 3D, you know, I, I know Wade hates 3D, and I sat next to Wade in, in Thor, and I saw him wear the glasses and swear under his breath and shake his fist like this, and I wore the glasses too, and of course, 3D glasses suck because he, he, the next time you see a 3D movie, do this. Wear the glasses and then drop them just enough so that the top half you see the screen without the glasses, and the bottom half, you see the screen with the glasses, and you'll see there's a difference. When you put the glasses on, the screen gets dimmer. Uh -huh. And when you take the glasses off, the screen is uh, brighter. And I'm sorry, you're watching a movie, you want the screen to be bright. Right. That's just how it goes. And 3D inherently, naturally, darkens the screen. Cinematographers hate it, directors hate it. And also, 3D just isn't necessary. Narratively, it's not necessary. I mean, Wade hates it more than like life itself. Me, I can partially justify a movie like Avatar, where at least when they go into the Avatar world, they're going into another thing. So there, at least, the 3D is moderately justified from a storytelling standpoint. But in something like Thor, you don't need it. But you know, from the nerd perspective of a comic book fan, it's when, when we go to those midnight showings on opening night, we all want to go to 3D. Everybody I go with, it's like, we got to do 3D. Let's do IMAX 3D. And, you, you know, and sometimes you, if you don't get there two or three hours early, you're sitting in a crappy seat and the 3D is horrible. But you know, it, uh, for some reason, it just feels like an event. You know, we were we were at Digital Hollywood today, and one of the things people were talking about about movies is, will the internet kill movies? And, and the discussion really became, people want to go be part of an event. And, and, and 
the 3D kind of makes it a little more special. I, I was, mean, I was on a panel today, and they were talking about how they want to be on an event, and it was like I was with the, I was on a panel with a lot of movie guys, big time movie guys, big funding guys, and they were all no theater's not dead. Cause I have to say this, blah blah blah, and I said, theater won't be dead when movies don't suck, and actually I think that was the end of my panel. So a lot of people applauded. I said, make movies good. King's Speech, good movie, but every movie should be that good. Well, here's here's the thing too, because you know, and this is getting off subject, but you, you, when you start talking about thirty dollar video on demand BS and and the death of DVD and Netflix and all this stuff, what people have to remember is that the value of a movie is set in its theatrical release. That's what values a movie. When you release a movie in a movie theater and it makes $250 million in a movie theater, that's what creates the value that makes people want to stream it, rent it, own it, whatever it is. If it's going straight to DVD, it's dead on arrival. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you can charge 30 bucks for a, vi a video on demand movie all you want. It's going to make a grand total of $300 because 10 people will watch it. Right. It's just not going to matter because the value of a film, it's worth, to, it's, it's worth to the public is set through the theatrical release and it'll never stop being that way. And you're right when it comes to movies being a communal experience. That's something you can't get even though it's convenient to watch it at home. And even though you can answer the phone and you can uh, put your kids to sleep if they're, if they're crying, and even though you don't have to pay for parking and popcorn and blah, 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 moves were meant to be seen and enjoyed with people who you can have this experience with. Do you have a buy, rent, or burn ready? Buy means go see it in the theater. Rent means wait till it's available on streaming probably nowadays. And burn means don't bother seeing it, basically. What well, would you give Thor? Well, I have an opinion. Does Corey have a graphic? No. No. <laughs> it was last minute. So you I'm, just came in. You just walked in from the screening. That's you what we're doing like at 10.30 at night. Uh, you know what? This is a screening where they gave you free uh, uh, soda and popcorn. So you're, therefore your review is? <laughs> I can be bought. Uh, I will give Thor a buy. Hey. Look at that. Hey.